Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video talking about some of the major releases for uh, 2018 coming from catalogs or from SHOT Show or otherwise from uh, some of the major companies. I, I might throw a couple of smaller ones in there, but still. Um, and by the way, apologies for a different kind of video and for the lower audio quality. I'm working on my home recording setup. Um, kind of shameful for me, I know. But first off, these are first impressions. If they're show releases. I'm missing information. Some of it may be incorrect. They might make changes. Who knows? And I'm just not a brilliant man. So don't take any of this as gospel. These are not full reviews nor final conclusions. And that's because I, well, haven't handled any of these knives. The videos you're going to see here today were actually shot by a reporter from Knife News um, who uh, went, went to shot and got to handle all these things in person. I was staying home here at Michigan working. But actually, I do want to thank Knife News very much for giving me this and throw them a quick plug. Knife News is a uh, website that kind of stays on top of various developments, knife releases in, in the knife world and community. So uh, you should absolutely check them out. And I've done a bunch of work for them before, too. I've done my Night Scribe series with Nick Shabazz that we're wrapping up right now, and I'm going to be giving them some opinion articles here in the future. So uh, that's uh, one more way to get a little bit more jackass in your life. But anyways, if you're a knife person, you should probably be looking at knife notes. Thank you very much, guys, for the video. It's a way better video uh, with that in there. Next off, of course, this is not a comprehensive list. I am not even mentioning a lot of stuff that didn't catch my attention or that I don't have art for. There are a lot of small companies that have announced things, custom makers, etc. I'm leaving out, and also all the big companies have a bunch of models that I'm not going to talk about. In some cases, it's just because I didn't have a strong opinion. In some cases, I'm not interested. In some cases, I just don't know enough to be interested. So, you know, don't look bad, Look at this and go, you know, oh my god, Nick, you didn't cover X. What are you doing? Where's your journalistic sense or whatever? I'm a freaking YouTuber guys, calm it down. So anyways, not a comprehensive list. And of course, as always, the price could change everything. Anytime you have these kinds of brand new catalog releases, it's it's really hard to say what the, 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 the exact price point's going to be. Map and whatnot makes it hard to calculate, so some of these things could be incredible pieces at one price, could be awful at another. Since I don't know any of that, that's not information that's available to me. So if it comes back like, Nick, you recommended this, but oh my god, it's expensive. Don't, don't take that out on me. I didn't know it either, guys. Anyways, you can, you can see I'm trying to tune down the comments right now. And then finally, speaking of which, this is just my opinion. Look, my channel is always just my opinion, but people still bring it up. It may well be that some of the knives that I kind of dismiss or I'm not a big fan of are ones that you're super excited about. That's awesome for you that you get more knives to be super excited about. And it could be that the ones I like are silly and stupid and whatever. But again, I'm just highlighting the ones that jump out to me, a, a random jackass on YouTube. Got to take it or leave it. So anyways, uh, let's go on ahead and jump into it. And we're just going to kind of go in a, a weird random order. And that is uh, starting off with Benchmade here. So Benchmade actually released all of their stuff in their upcoming catalog. So this information's been around for a little while here. But they've also been doing a lot more releases that are kind of off catalog. You know, the the, the, the prop, uh, uh, you know, new versions, the bug out, for instance, dropped off the catalog. So I'm hoping that this isn't the entirety of their 2017 release schedule here. So first off is the Mini Crooked River, and God did this knife need to be mini. I handled the full size when reviews coming, but it's just a huge freaking knife, oh my God. And so seeing one that's scaled down to 3.5 inches, which is not mini, by the way, um, is nice to see. I think it's going to make it a much more compelling everyday carry option for a lot of people who didn't need something that damn big and unwieldy. So I am very excited, and this is a knife that I absolutely do want to check out. And I'm hoping very much for the Micro Crooked River to come down the road here shortly, which is actually mini, uh, and might be uh, even more interesting to somebody like me. Next up, uh, we have the, the, the Grizzly, uh, oh god, what is it? I want to say it's the Grizzly Prime, but that's because I think it looks like a freaking Transformer. Grizzly Ridge, I think? Either way, um, it looks like a freaking Transformer. Like, out of the 1980s version, you know, it, 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 this would turn into a Jeep or something. Um, but either way, it's an interesting piece. The blade on it reminds me a lot of their Hunt line. It's got that non-committal recurve I'm not in love with. And the color scheme... I don't know, but it is something that's kind of, I'm curious about. It should be interesting to check out down the road here. Then finally from Benchmade, we have the Fact. And this is a weird knife to me. It's huge, it's big, and it is murdery. I mean, seriously, it's like one of the new executives sits down at the table like, guys, we don't have anything super murdery, like a, a cold steel refugee. They, so they put something down, no, 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 murdery. And then they put something down next meeting, no, murdery. And then next meeting, next meeting, next meeting, and then eventually we ended up with the Benchmade Fact. 
I, I, I mock it a little bit, but, uh, you know, it's a big, long, stylet kind of knife sort of thing. Uh, four inches, should be very lightweight, and, you know, it's different. It, aside from the Cold Steel friendly, uh, Frenzy, that is, friendly, <laughs> it would never release that. Um, th there's not much out there like it. So, it's interesting. It's absolutely, though, not for me. Uh, but, hey, why the heck not? Next up is Spyderco. Spyderco had a very, to my mind, boring catalog this year. Their catalog, the highlight of it for me was the LC200N native. And, you know, when the, the highlight is a, an existing model with a new steel, given it's a good steel, that, that wasn't so interesting. So I was hoping they would really bring it at SHOT Show. Drop a bunch of new knives, and indeed, they actually did. The first off is the Amalgam. The Amalgam is kind of an amalgamation of a couple of different knives. I don't know if that was their plan or what, but it's a compression lock flipper uh, like the, um, the, the Sliver Axe was. Hopefully they've got the detent dialed in a little bit more, but it looks like it's got a reasonable blade shape for actually getting work done. It's got a finger choil, etc. I think this could be a pretty compelling piece if everything's done right, and especially if they've learned a little bit from the, uh, the Sliver Axe detent issue here. But, uh, and it seemed to have deployed okay, so, you know, we'll, we'll see in the grand scheme of things. But it's on my radar. Next one that's on my radar is the Mantra 3. Now, it makes sense. You repeat mantras. That's what you do, so having another one totally. But they've made this a compression lock flipper, and that's, that's interesting. This is a very practical blade shape, a reasonably small knife, and it looks like you could even use the front of the flipper tab as a finger choil here. I don't know. I'm very curious here. Um, I don't know that it's going to change any worlds, and it's an S30V now, rather than M4 for the previous mantras, but hey, we'll check it out. Next up, the Brower. Um, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. This knife has the potential to be boring. What I mean by that is that it is the kind of tool, from the looks of it, that will just go into your pocket, cut things, and then disappear when you're not using it. And that's something I like very much. With a nice finger choy, it looks very ergonomic. I'm really actually hopeful for this to be a very straightforward piece. The thing that scares me looking at the video here is that uh, it's got a very, very shallow carry. That clip, I mean, uh, like a quarter of the knife is sticking up out the pocket there. But uh, it is something I definitely want to check out because I think it could be a solid tool. This guy, the waterway, makes me wish I was a fixed blade person. This is an LC200N fixed blade, actually designed by a member on the Spyderco forum. But it's an interesting little piece, and it's absolutely something that uh, if I were, if I had any role for a fixed blade in my life, I would be checking out. I think it looks pretty neat, and LC200N is just an incredible freaking steal. So there you go. Is this the World Wrestling Federation, or was there just a smock down? Uh, this is the Spyderco smock. It is a production version of the Smock SK-23, and I, I, I like a lot of elements of this. I reviewed an SK-23, and I'm actually on the guy's books for a custom one. Um, but uh, anyways, so uh, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. I love the compression lock, button lock approach that Smock takes. I think it's really smart, and I hope that Spyderco uses it more. The, uh, the notable feature here is that big choil in the blade. It's going to be easy to sharpen, um, but that's a necessity, actually given the nature of the button lock there. Um, you know, that, that's going to be a take it or leave it for a lot of people, but it is absolutely a knife I'm going to want to check out because it offers a lot of compelling options here. And that front flipper tab is great. So next on my radar is this little guy. This is the Spyderco Parata. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very curious about this. Uh, it's another Paul Alexander knife, same guy who did the Ouroboros and the Sliver Axe. I want to take this thing apart. It's got a new locking mechanism that you see here in the back, and I don't know how it works, and I want to know how it works. As for me personally, I don't think it's going to be a keeper because it's three and a half inch blade with all belly, and uh, it's a Japanese G10 and VG10 model, which means the value is just really not going to be there, likely. But the thing is, um, it's interesting enough that I kind of have to take one apart, take a look at it, and see what it, how it actually works in everyday life. Who knows? It might surprise me. But I'm really curious about this lock more than anything else. Oh my god, it's happening! The Spyderco Techno 2 has finally been announced. The Techno 2 is the second version of the Spyderco Techno, a knife that I owned and very much did love. But the problem with the Techno is it was just too damn thick. It didn't cut that well. And what they've done here is they've taken the Techno and they've remodeled it after Martin Sleesh's original custom, the mouse. And so they've made it a thinner knife in the blade. They're using thinner blade stock. And, and they just kind of narrowed that grind down a little bit. I hope that this is going to be a super compelling 
upcoming night that I will absolutely be picking one up to compare to some of my other favorites in this range, like the Alamic Busker is a big point of comparison here. You can see they've moved the standoffs away from a uh, plastic backspacer. That's going to be good for some. Um, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I can also understand needing to lose some weight in the back end of it after they've thinned down the blade stock as much as they have. So either way, I'm really going to pick one of these guys up. Real excited about this one. So this last one, I don't have any art for because it was given as an exclusive to another company uh, sort of thing. But the thing is, I'm excited about it. The speed, uh, Spydeco Peter Resenti Python seems to fix a lot of the issues that the Nirvana had and make something really, really compelling. Um, I They've added a lock bar insert. They've thinned down the blade grind. I think they've moved away from the blasted blade. It really feels like this is the constant quality improvement version of the Nirvana that a lot of people were hoping for. As long as the price isn't completely and totally freaking insane, and this has been a year of Spydeco price hikes, I'm really, really excited about this guy and will absolutely pick one up. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I, I was lulled into sleep sweet embrace by thinking about ZT's 2018 lineup. I, it, it's snarky, but still. I asked for one thing from ZT, and that was for something innovative, something new and different, and they provided something that was precisely inside their box. Their entire 2018 lineup are literally versions of knives that they've already been making. They, they've made some subtle tweaks to them, sure, but they've changed two limited editions into production versions. Then they've made a bigger version of the 560. Wow, 460, that is. Wow, amazing. Go figure, right? And this is kind of a real disappointment for me. There are so many great American designers out there and other people around the world. And, and the fact that ZT wasn't able to come up with any new collaborations or anything really just kind of, that was a wind out of the sails sort of knocking moment. But their new models of this guy, the 393, which is based on the Hindu Eclipse model, although I think they said that there's a similar thing. But look, it's very similar to the 392 limited editions. I've already reviewed these guys on the channel, so you can take a look at my review of that. Honestly, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a fine knife. It'll work well. It'll be a solid tool, but we, we've seen this already, ZT. Thank you very much. And I don't know that there's enough difference here to really, well, wake me up, so to speak. Next up, we got a version of the R.J. Martin Limited Edition they already released. I have a review of that up on the channel. Um, the thing that bugs me about, and it's a little bit smaller, but the thing that bugs me about this is that glaring proprietary pivot right in the middle there. They had better include the tool for that inside every damn box for free. I did hear one rumor that they were planning to sell it, and that is awful. That's like kicking someone in the nuts and then charging them money for an ice pack. That's brutal, ugly, 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 and I really hope that they don't do that. Um, if they're going to use that pivot, which they don't need to anyways, it doesn't really win you anything, they better at least include the tool for this to be even remotely a knife that I would consider thinking about. Um, but otherwise, honestly, even without it, not super interesting. Nothing real different there. Speaking of nothing that different, here's the 462. It's a fine knife. I mean, I'm sure, and the 452 was great, and I'm a little concerned about the red carbon fiber, but this could be interesting, I suppose. Maybe, I, maybe I'm reading too much into it. I'm hoping that grind is actually thin, so it will actually cut well. I don't know what uh, we're going to see, but this is probably the most interesting of the three to me, just because I really do like the 452, and, uh, you know, hopefully they're using the same excellence they have there, but, uh, you know, I have a review of the 460 already, and this is going to be that, but scaled up. Well, we'll see, but overall, unimpressive. Um, uh, Kershaw is... Uh, also, I, I'm going to be honest, not super impressing me. Um, Kershaw's, the ray of hope for them lately has been their USA factory. Um, because they've been making things like the Link, the Dividend, etc., which are great, great pieces. Uh, and so I was hoping that we'd see a lot more coming out of the USA factory this time around. Um, but instead we see kind of the usual, a smattering of Chinese-made models, uh, which are going to be, you know, range from good to bad to ugly. Um, and then there is one new USA made model here. Um, this is the overall Kershaw lineup right here. And uh, what you can see here is they've got the uh, new version of the Fraction, which is fine. They've got a version of the Hindra Dagger, which is interesting. Down there in the bottom corner, they have the, uh, the, the, the uh, Smurfshaw, if you will, a uh, bright blue 
uh, knife where everything on it's blue, which is interesting. Um, and goes nicely with that 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 eighties song there. Um, then then they've got a bunch of variants of the Natrix. They've got one in copper, which if they get the balance right, is going to be I guess interesting. But I'm kind of tired of the Natrix design. I mean, they've used it over and over and over and over again. Um, and so I'm uh, yeah, I'm kind of done there. The one thing that is kind of interesting to me out of all of these is the new made in the USA uh, version here, which is the uh, the, the Kershaw bare knuckle. Um, and the the, the bare knuckles deal is that it is a made in the USA a version of that Natrix. Um, and the thing that's really impressive to me about the bare knuckle here is that it is not assisted. This is an unassisted knife running on bearings made in the USA from Kershaw. Um, even if I'm not a huge fan of the design itself, I mean, it's fine, but this could be a really compelling option if it is made well and if it is done well. Um, because I want to see more unassisted knives coming out of Kershaw's USA factory. Kershaw is doing very, very, very good work in the US factory, and I'm really, really hoping that they're able to pull off something pretty incredible uh, with, with the bare knuckle here, and it is a fine platform, I suppose, uh, and we'll give them, you know, another way to use that uh, 777 design. So, uh, there you go, that's, that's the bare knuckle, and that's really the only Kershaw that's on my radar, per se, this year. You know, actually, that's not entirely true. There is one other that I, I'm adding in afterwards. That's the Atmos. This is a Sinkovich model with Kershaw. It looks, though, like, based on the price and otherwise, that it's a made-in-China line, which is something... This could be really great. This could be really awful. I just don't know. And so I, I'm really curious. If it's if it's like the, uh, the, 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 the Fraction, then it could be excellent. But if it's like the Nura, it could be a piece of crap. So we're really going to see. I'm, I love the design. I'm really curious but we're not going to know until it's in hands. Next up is Kaiser. So Kaiser Knives has been putting out a lot of interesting collaborations, and they seem to be continuing that trend uh, into 2018. It's also worth watching their Tangra uh, Tangram line, which is a budget version uh, of what they're doing. This is an interesting piece. This is a slip joint coming out of Kaiser, and I'm loving all these modern slip joints. It's a great option for people who need non-locking knives, but this one, too, you can see, actually has, as he's going to show off when he opens it here, a finger choil, which makes this guy safer than most slip joints, because even if it tries to close in your hand, it won't be able to, and that's great. Um, and so I'm very curious about this. The stock's looking a little bit thick, uh, but, you know, we're, we're going to see how this guy looks, and I absolutely want to pick one of these guys up. Next up is the Nick Swan Matanza. So this is the douchiest knife name ever. It literally is Spanish for murder. Come on, guys, really. Um, but the Matanza is a beautiful knife design, 100%. Um, and it's something that I am very curious to check out from Kaiser. I, I, I think it's going to be a neat thing, and I think it would be a nice way for Nick Swan to get more of his work out there, etc. So um, I, I am curious about it, even if the name drives me absolutely up a freaking wall. And I think it is, like I said, a beautiful design, especially with these carbon fiber inlays here. Then finally, we've got the Kaiser Knives Theta. This is an interesting piece. Um, I'm curious about it. I am a little bit terrified by the blade at the bottom there. Um, as you can see right here, that blade is awfully close, and I'm really, I, I, I almost cut myself just walking this video. But that said, if that's not a concern, I love the low-profile flip tab Elijah's been using. And this has the possibility for a nice high grind, which will slice well. This is another Elijah Isham design. Follow up to the Megatherium. I'm curious about it, but God, I hope that blade isn't as dangerous as it looks. Um, so yeah, they, they, there you go. So from Lion Steel, there was only really one thing I wanted to see this year. After seeing the SR11, I wanted to see the SR22, the smaller version of it. But they did that, but unfortunately they didn't do anything to fix any of the issues of the SR11. So you can see here the blade stock is still really thick. The handle is still really slippery. There's no jimping or texturing on the tab. I'm worried that, and I kind of suspect that this is basically the SR11, but scaled down a little bit. And... That's, unfortunately, not quite good enough. I was hoping that they would take the opportunity to address some of the issues that people in the community have had with the SR11, but uh, unfortunately, it looks like they've just released a smaller SR11. Good, great, bad, and ugly. And so, uh, unfortunately, although they've now made a knife that is appealing to me at the size level, I'm not so sure they've, uh, they, they, they've done anything else. If I've missed the boat, though, well, I hope I have. 
So uh, CRKT's collection has been available for a little while now. We found out about this stuff way before shot. Um, and they've got a bunch of brand new things. I mean, they, they're using the home front technology, I'm sorry, the field strip technology that we saw in the home front a great deal more often. Um, and they, they, they're doing some other interesting things. Uh, but I'm just going to focus on the couple of knives that are really jumping out at me that I absolutely do want to check out. One of those is this little guy. This is the Caligo by T.J. Schwartz, the designer of the Millet Torrent, the Kodig Arius. He is one of my favorite designers working working right now in the knife world. And I, I'm very curious to see what he's come up with here with CRKT. He seems pretty happy with it, and that's a pretty good sign. So I'm very curious about this little guy. As always, unfortunately, the steels aren't quite what I want. Uh, but, you know, hopefully it's going to provide a compelling budget option for people. And given that TJ's a pretty function-forward person, I hope it's going to work out to be something pretty excellent. Next up is this little guy. This is another one of those knives that has the strong... Uh, this is the Maven, by the way. Um, uh, this has another... Uh, the look of it's going to be another simple thing done well. And that's what Cricut does best. When Cricut is at their best, they're taking a design that's not too complicated, that doesn't... It's not too expensive to make. And they're just doing something straightforwardly and doing it well and doing it inexpensively and so I'm hoping that this is going to be a uh, Richard Rogers by the way uh, this is going to be another one of those kinds of things a good basic tool that people can pick up use and enjoy looking forward to handling one of these guys I like the look of it 100 percent 100 percent then finally there's this little guy this is the HVAC which is by uh, Jesper Voxnes um, and it's a very interesting piece um, it's using the field strip technology but it's a slightly more I don't want to say practical, but it's it's a different design. It doesn't have the big pocket pecker, and it looks like it's it's going to be reasonably well constructed. I'm seeing a tall blade with a nice deep grind. I'm hoping this is going to be a heck of a cutting tool here. I've also heard a number of people say that my home front review, that it must have been a bad unit or something like that, because they've had better experiences. So I'm absolutely going to pick one of these guys up to make sure that what I was seeing was a bad knife rather than the uh, field strip thing being problematic. But this one's definitely on my radar, 100%. Now we come to Medford Knives. So I know many of you thinking, oh, a sculpture. But the thing is, I've been really impressed with Medford lately. I handled the Dress Marauder. That review is coming up before too long here. They are on a great upward trajectory. I really, really hope that if they can bring their materials up to match their prices or bring their prices down, they are going to be an interesting because they're making leaps and bounds worth of improvements on a regular basis. And actually, their newest releases show me that, that, that they really are trying and they're really changing it up. We'll put aside the proprietary pivot here, which is just as ugly as sin, and that's a common one of their sins, but what we see here is that this is Medford Knives' first button lock knife. That's right, rather than being a frame lock, this is a button lock. You hit that top button there, and that'll unlock the knife. He's also using S35VN on the blade, which is a beautiful thing. I love seeing him moving away from D2 at his kinds of price points. Still a little bit thick in the blade. I don't know quite how it's ground in terms of cutting, but, you know, it's great to see him trying something new with the button locks. The other thing that's really interesting to me is this guy. This is the Medford Marauder Slim. That's right, Greg Medford is finally thinking about things in terms of practical cutting use. Um, and I, I think he, he, my discussions with him have made me think that, yeah, he, he's aware. And so these new slim lines are going to be a little bit more interesting for people for whom the classical Marauder was always just like LOL. It was an interesting modern sculpture. So I love seeing this trend right now where the big overbuilt makers are, are making slim knives. That's great to see, and I think that makes Medford a lot more compelling and interesting than previously. Now let's take a little visit to Ontario, not the, the, the one that's like, you know, an hour that way from me. Um, but but the, the, the Ontario Knife and Tool, these are the folks who released the Rat 2D2 freaking finally, um, eh, which is bringing me some absolute joy. Um, but there, there, there's only one knife in their collection that's really jumping out at me at the moment, and that's, that's this little guy right here. This is the uh, Trinity. It's designed by Robert Carter, and uh, this is actually a production version of the little BBM knife. Um, Dr. Frunky, another YouTuber, he's got a channel, you should check him out, Has uh, is just over the moon freaking in love with his, and his is the custom version. Here they've made a production one, and it seems like a relatively small little knife, and it seems like if it's done well, it could be very interesting. Considering that Ontario did the Carter Prime, which was another collab with Carter, oh, and by the way, that Choil, oh yeah. But anyways, um, uh, considering that the Carter Prime had an incredible action, I'm optimistic that this is going to be a nice piece too. And uh, given the, the, the praise that Doc has had for this design, well, he is hoping. So this one is absolutely something I'm curious about. So the other company I had high hopes for was Chris Reeve Knives. So Chris Reeve is a 
great production company. They make some incredible pieces, uh, this Sabenza and more. But lately, that's all they've been making is this Sabenza and, and its friends, the the Nkosi, the Umnum Zan, the Menandi. They had some other pieces, but they've discontinued them all, and, and they got some fixed blades. But still, I really, really have been hoping that Chris Reeve would drop something new to put them back on the map, so to speak. Because right now, they're who you go to for a Sabenza, but otherwise, they're, they're just not interesting. And by staying still, they've fallen behind. So I was really hoping that this year at Shot, they might drop and announce something new, different, and interesting. But instead, we got a bunch of unique graphics on Sabenzas. So uh, you can get a water buffalo on your Sabenza, if that's of interest to you. You can get a bunch of hexagons on your Sabenza, given they're attractive hexagons, 100%. As an acoustician, the, the Doppler effect is near and dear to my heart, so uh, th th that's kind of cool. Um, this is a, a commentary on the, the, the politics of early America and that the colonies need to join together or they will perish. I'm glad they're taking a political stance here. Maybe a little late. Uh, this is a koi pond. I can't help but think of the office, but uh, it's still pretty attractive. And then this one... I'm not entirely sure what this is, um, but it's certainly a thing. Then they've released a new wood, which is certainly not unattractive, but this is not really what I was hoping for, and so I'm hoping that it may be a Blade show. Um, uh, Chris Reeve will drop something new and interesting and leverage their production power to, 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 to really, you know, come back and charging into the knife fray, but as it is right now, I mean, they're making the same thing, and that, that's great, but by standing still, they're falling behind, and it may reach a point where we're just like, oh, Chris Reeve? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I guess they're out there still, right? So I, I hope to see something new soon. So Hither and Ives, um, this year they have announced uh, just one product, uh, and that is the XM18 New Generation. They've made two changes here. First off, they have added another blade shape to their stable, which is great. I appreciate that they offer many shapes, because different shapes are really better suited for different tasks. This new one is almost in the same vein as the Insingo blade that you see from Chris Reed. The other major difference you can see right now is that uh, screw in the middle of the lock bar there. There is now a steel lock bar insert on the XM18. This, uh, they explained, is mostly helpful for them during servicing. So if somebody, you know, injures the knife in some way, very often they can refit a lock bar insert. That'll make things better. By the way, not all of them come with the spinny gears. That's a, uh, it's a, a whole other little deal for, uh, different deal there. I'm kind of secretly hoping that this is running on phosphor bronze washers, given that the slip joint was. But, uh, you know, I'm not holding my breath there. But given what I've seen in the MP... Ones as well as in the, um, the the half tracks, I think they are getting better on the tent, which really removes some of the biggest bugaboo with the Teflon. But anyways, um, that's the new generation XM18. It's nice to see them continually improving their product line there, and uh, I do like this new blade shape. I think it should be a pretty good choice for a number of people. Uh, and uh, like I said, if there's bronze in there, holy crap! But otherwise, it's still a pretty solid little upgrade there. So Boca dropped some new knives, and, you know, with Boca, I'm, I'm never quite sure. I mean, very often they'll release some quality stuff. Very often they'll release some really poorly made stuff. So it's hard to tell how any given knife is going to go. But there were a couple that jumped out at me as being pretty interesting. This is a collaboration between Boca Knives and ProTech and then uh, Lucas Burnley. This is a Boca Quaken Automatic. Um, which is really, that's interesting to me, mostly because ProTech is involved, because they make very nice stuff. I got some, uh, I, I've got some reviews coming up of some ProTechs. I'm not a big fan of the Burnley Quake in pattern, I'm going to be honest with you there, but it's good to see that kind of a collaboration, absolutely 100%. And I think this could be, if you've been looking for, well, precisely that knife, this is a nice little option here. Um, next thing from Boca is the Urban Trapper here, uh, except this is a... Uh, they, they've done something a little bit different. The Urban Trapper I've reviewed before, it's a nice little light-use sort of gentleman's EDC knife. Um, but as we will see in just a moment, what the heck? They, they've released not only a Tonto Urban Trapper, but a Compound Grind Urban Trapper. And it looks like a reasonable compound grind, where it's very thin in the middle and very thick out there at the tip. Um, but this is kind of a weird choice, because the Urban Trapper is kind of the consummate lightweight light use gentleman's knife to go weird compound okay i guess and then there's this little guy this is a smaller version of the urban trapper uh which i think is going to be a nice little choice because the urban trapper is a long knife it is surprisingly long and so i think a smaller version of that is going to make it a little bit more appealing to people who haven't been after the folding steak knife uh sort of aesthetic that it is offered previously so, uh, there you go. Then just a note on price tags. It's hard to say whether that's MSRP or real price. Don't take 
too much weight into that. Then finally, here's the lateralis. Um, this is an interesting little piece. Um, this is a knife, actually, that I've been wanting to check out for the channel. I just haven't yet. And this is an oversight. A lot of people are loving the lateralis. I keep hearing that it's so damn good. I, I just, I haven't had a chance. I can't keep up. So, uh, but I'm very curious about this uh, as a piece. And uh, the fact that they're doing new versions means that they're, that they're seeing some success with it. And based on everything I'm hearing, that's probably just but again, I haven't reviewed one yet, so keep an eye out on the channel. Sooner or later, I'm going to. It's going to be... Then we'll wrap it up with Steel Will. In some ways, I'm really interested to see what Steel Will released last year at SHOT Show. Uh, because they, they uh, dropped a brand new locking mechanism. I handled it at Blade Show. It looked pretty nice. And, and a, a couple of their other stuff that they announced then still hasn't come out yet. So take anything that you see here with a grain of salt in terms of you'll be able to get it by this time next year. But anyways, a um, couple of interesting things. This is a new one called the Intrigue. Um, and it is sort of in the same vein as the cut jack. Um, it's a D2 and plastic knife, um, but they also have the, the Italian-made version uh, in higher-end steels and whatnot. Um, I'm very curious about this as a piece, just because I, I really like the cut jack series, and offering other uh, items kind of in that same line are great. And I think if it's anything like the cut jacks, uh, the, 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 the cheaper one is probably going to be where you want to be at in terms of value and whatnot. They are also doing a smaller version of it, and that's pictured here. This is the Italian version they're picturing, which looks like it might be a nice gentleman's folder. I really hope that they've got the grinds a little bit more in line. Because as it was last time, the Italian model with the M390 was ground much more thickly, and as a result, wasn't quite as compelling as a cutting tool. I'm, but I'm hoping they've got that right in this new version. But either way, the smaller of these guys, the small intrigue, absolutely does intrigue me. And it's something I'd like to check out, particularly the, the D2 and plastic version. So, final conclusions. First off, I do want to one more time thank my uh, my buddies over at KnifeNews.com who let me use their video. That made this video a heck of a lot better than it would have been otherwise. But anyways, um, I uh, final conclusions... It was. It's a very interesting year in terms of knife making. Um, in terms of who won SHOT Show, which is a really common question, for me, I think the answer is Spydeco. They held back a great deal from their catalog, and then in one fell swoop at SHOT Show, kind of re reinvigorated their high end with the Smock, the Techno, the Python, and a couple of other interesting pieces. So in a lot of ways, they were very, very shock and awe at SHOT Show. There was a whole bunch of things, shot and awe, I guess? Um, but there were a whole bunch of things there that are new and really interesting that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. But there were other nice releases from a bunch of other companies here. And I'm very curious. But the thing that I'm actually most hopeful about um, is that more and more companies seem to be moving to a regular release schedule, where you'll just see a random knife, like Benchmade did this with the bug out last year, where it was just like randomly we heard about the bug out, and then it was available the next week. That's great, and I really hope that that becomes the pattern in the future, because it is already the pattern with a lot of makers, people like Kaiser Wee, etc., where they'll just kind of randomly drop things, and then you can just go ahead and buy them. And that, that's a, a great approach, and it beats the heck out of, we're going to announce something in January, and you can buy it in December. So I, I'm hoping that there's a lot of, uh, for instance, companies like ZT, who, who had a really unimpressive showing, I hope that they do start doing that, where they just drop a random new model and, and then distribute it quickly. I think that would be a great idea, and it would help to make up for a disappointing show by offering something new throughout the year. But anyways, we have a whole bunch of interesting new pieces that we can take a look at during the course of this year. I hope you found this video interesting and that you uh, have enough uh, resources to check out everything you want to. I'll do my best to pick things up as they come out uh, that, that are going to be interesting, but I only have so much time. But uh, if there's anything you're particularly interested in seeing me talk about, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments and let me know what your feelings are. Who, who won shot for you? What's the most exciting thing that you came out? Well, let's start Talk about these down in the comments. Anyways, have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Thank you. Bye now.